McLaren builds large complex composites. So we have a medium volume production, but in a high mix environment, which traditional automation struggles with. There's a lot of rigid programming and fixturing and things that you need to deploy to be successful in doing that. In a dusty environment like sanding and, and prep for paint, people didn't necessarily want to be in that environment. Sanding on a particular shift, it's nine hour days, constantly pulling parts in, sanding them, looking at them, sending them out. It's got some wear to it. This is one of the worst ergonomically challenging positions in terms of how you do it. I saw the opportunity to make it a better workplace for people. Now with the system that's been deployed, they no longer have to do all of those operations by hand. They only have to hit targeted areas that the robot maybe cannot reach. So now they're not reaching, moving, exposing themselves to that level of dust on a daily basis. I think it's better because it has a vacuum system, so it's keeping the dust out of the air. We're trying to take the worst parts of their job and, and automate it. Many times automation is approached through a labor reduction, and so what we didn't want to do is we didn't want to do that. We wanted to upskill our employees and, and train people from being you know, sanders to being robot operators. From the time we actually signed the agreement to the time we had a, a robot on our floor actively sanding parts was only about a month. McLaren is working on product development and technology for large complex parts. We strive and thrive in complexity, really, in building complexity into our parts and building complexity moving forward. The gray matter technology fit a niche for us in that we could still combine the increased volume and the increased production and complexity, but not have to conform to some of the rigid traditional automation that needed to happen. The gray matter system is able to manage that complexity just by the nature of what it does. It, it does what's in front of it versus what you tell it was in front of it. Yeah, the, the gray matter robot really doesn't need programming on our side, so it's extremely simple. And with the scan and sand, you just kind of throw it in there within a general reasonable area and it scans it and sands it without you needing to worry about indexing the part. It's pretty amazing. It's a really user-friendly interface, so it doesn't take like a lot of knowledge with it to know what you're doing. It wasn't that hard to learn. I'm actually glad we got it because it makes, like I said, life a lot easier. And if I had to look at all this programming, you know, I don't know that it would be practical for all the different product lines that we have. And when you get to these critical uh, phases like this, you, you really want to have consistency. Knowing the times it's going to take to do things, it makes scheduling a lot easier. It makes Workflow easier, it makes production easier. We've had about a 30% increase in certain product lines on the throughput analysis. We're actively able to insource work that we used to have to outsource. We're not up against the line, we are actually ahead because I have the gray matter robot doing two parts to a person's one part. As far as quality, I think it's nice to know every part's gonna be the same for the most part. They know exactly what to expect, what's gonna come off the robot. The idea that surface prep as a service as opposed to a CapEx purchase was a very different model. It enabled us to make a fast decision without as much risk as you would generally have if you were making a traditional CapEx investment. There is a vested interest from, from the folks at Gray Matter to keep the system operational for us. Because it's a robot as a service, we don't need to stock up on spare parts or worry about maintenance. So when things go wrong, Gray Matter is on it. But it's pretty much immediate, like anything, some, something goes wrong, they're right there every time. So I haven't seen any lag. I mean, we had an issue today, it was taken care of within maybe 20 minutes. The bell curve of manufacturing for these types of applications are more of a uh, high mix, low volume. And so if you really want to help move the needle with regard to automation, you needed to be able to do that in this sort of high mix, lower volume application. And the idea that it's flexible enough to be able to take on these relatively smaller quantities of parts in an agile way, I think that's a big deal of gray matter robotics.